Harold Ballard had made a comment in the paper, I don't know, three or four days before that, a couple days before that. If only he could find a center to play with Landing and Tiger. So, obviously it was a bit of a shot towards me, and, yeah. but that was Harold, you know. Um, and then that night everything just fell into place and happened. Well, Lanny was a you know, great lineman and teammate of mine for a while, and he's got the good snapshot. So he was coming down the wing, um, obviously in a position to let it go. <clears throat> That's Ian Turnbull, who had a great shot. I mean, look at the grease way out of his net. But the nice thing uh, as a forward, playing with Boria and Ian, they would come up on the play and almost give you an out as a fourth forward. So it's again, now we're going to talk about forwards coming up on the play or defensemen coming up on the play, Boria. I made the rush around the defense. Uh, I just drove to the front of the net. Boria made kind of a one-hand uh, pass out to me. Hitler wins the draw. Boria Off the draw, sorry. Off the draw, sorry. Yeah, that was kind of a set play you had all the time. That was a player that you know, was strong on face-offs, and uh, you know, Boria had a good shot. The wingers hold up the other wingers from going out, gave him lots of time to, to wind up again. That one there, I was a long way out, but that puck dipped a little bit, you know, and any goalie, you know, when a puck's flipping end over end, I think uh, he's, you know, got off <coughs> balance somewhat. I don't know where, where it went through his legs or through his arm or whatever, but the fact that it was dipping, and it might even hit the, uh, the Bruins' uh, leg or stick uh, to uh, change the direction on Reese. What happened, there was a delay penalty, so... Uh, I think Wayne Thomas was in that. He was coming to the bench, so I was the next centerman to go. So I just jump on the ice of Jack Ballaquette's in the corner. So that's why I'm up with a different line there and threw it out to me in the slot and I just slapped it home. I honestly say this, there's games that I played as well or better that night, but didn't end up with 10 points. Might end up with four points or five points. I had lots of scoring opportunities. That particular night, you know, most of them went in or we passed the guy number one. So. No, it wasn't like that was my best game I've ever played. There were other games I played that were as good or better, but didn't end up discouraging. The so there again, there's Boria coming in as the fourth forward, so to speak. The defenseman moving up in the play gave Lanny an opportunity to you know, have an out somewhere to the pass. You know, Boria just deflected and didn't pass Reese again. Like, you know, a lot of those goals, Reese, you know, he didn't have a chance on it too much. You know? Can blame him as much as saying he had a bad game, but you know, there was a lot of good goals just inside yeah. the post. He, you know, he wasn't getting a whole lot of protection out there. Man and I, I mean, <clears throat> we were two guys that you know, we were in sync. You know, sometimes you get the ch chance to play with players that you have that instinctive intuitiveness of where you're going to be, you know, where to pass it and all that stuff. We had that. You know, yeah. You know, there's a few players you get that with, but Lanny and I had that. That was a Maybe the prettiest one. Feet got around the defenseman, but again, I was coming down my offside. I had lots of speed, so the defenseman it was, you know, it's hard to defend a guy when you're you're backing up and they get the forwards got a little bit more speed on you. For sure. When you're on your offside, you can bring the puck to your forehand, which I did there. Tucked it inside the post. If you watch it closely, it just went, you know, it just went inside the post. But I, you know, because of the speed and the way the goal ended up, I ended up behind the net, you know, hitting the boards and kind of. Knowing again at that point, because that was the eighth point, right? Yeah, that, that was the tied point. the record. You know, so that's the start of the third period. So, <clears throat> you know, that one was extra special. Again, you look at that shot. <clears throat> it's right inside the first time. It's hard for you. You know, he came right out of his head. He's playing the puck the way uh, you know, he should, but I made a, a, a great shot just inside the, you know, so. That was a great shot. Yeah, oh, it was nice. Now here's the here's the one that I just put my hands up in there and shook my head. Brad, I'm behind in that looking for Earl when you see him in the slot to make a pass over to him. And Brad Park uh, tries to intercept it, deflects off his skate. Dave Reese is moving across, which he normally would do. And uh, so looks like well, that one was on the on real. So the, that, that kind of told the story. I mean, it was just one of those, I'd say, the puck had eyes. And I would often said that <clears throat> after that in the 90s when I'm watching Wayne Gretzky get 200 and some points a season and Merrill Lemieux, the skill level those guys had, that they would be the guys that would have a shot at it. 
<laughs> I think there was, um, you know, you can look it up. I don't know, eight or nine guys that had, had eight, eight point eight, eight guys. Patrick Sundstrom, uh, <coughs> Sam Gagne would have been the most yeah. recent one. Yeah. So, the fact that that had happened, and when you say it, like Patrick or Gagne was uh, Sam Gagne, is it Sam? Right? Yeah, Sam. Sam. Gagne, yeah. <clears throat> if you would have said, okay, who would be a guy, you know, 10 years ago that might score 8 or 10 points, you wouldn't say Sam Gagne, but he had one of those nights, everything went for it. That can happen again to somebody else. It doesn't have to be Ovechkin or, you know, Kane or whoever, you know, but it could happen. It could happen. I mean, yeah. I guess <clears throat> to say, hey, 40 years have gone by and nobody's, you know, got 9 or 10, uh, people say, hey, that record's never going to be broken. I don't. You know, I, I hope it doesn't get broken, but if it does, I could understand why, because that's sport. The unknown can happen to anybody, as it did to me, so I, I'd respect that. If it did happen, well, good on the guy that, yeah. that, that did it, so to speak. Well said. Because I was a, a Maple Leaf player in Toronto, and now working in the organization, um, I'm fortunate that there's still lots of opportunities for me. And, uh, um, I get out and do some motivational speaking, sometimes with corporations that talk about team building, what I like in a coach, what I don't like in a coach, uh, um, things like that. Uh, I get an opportunity to do a number of charity events, fundraisers. Uh, like I was just out in Melville, Saskatchewan this past week and uh, you know, they auctioned off one of my jerseys from back in the, the 70s. The jersey went for close to $4,000. So, I mean, when you think of those sorts of things, you can make a difference. There's opportunities out there. Um, there's lots of people who watch me play, feel that they know you, and then they get an opportunity to you know, share a story with them or get a picture or an autograph. Um, as far as the 10-point game goes, uh, I've got a uh, line of products out there, sticks, um, hats, pucks, all signed that, again, their memories or gifts that a wife might want to give a husband or a, yeah. a child that uh, it's a keepsake. So, um, it, it's, so it's a win-win situation for, for all of us. And I enjoy doing that. I enjoy getting out. It's uh, it's part of my job with the lease of being an ambassador, which Wendell and I do, but on the other mm -hmm. part of it, uh, you know, I, I can independently go and do my own thing also. So it's, uh, when I do those sorts of things, I feel I leave a little bit of me with the person, and, and that's who I am, so that's, a, that's important. Very cool. Um, and it kind of it kind of makes me, it reminds me, um, I think from what I know about you, you're a player who has done very well post-career and, and has had a lot of good business opportunities, has been smart with money, all those kind of things. Um, I think you're known as, as someone who sets a strong example for, for the post-career life of a player. Um, and, and because of that, do you sort of have advice that you like to pass on to, <coughs> to guys who are sort of retiring today and not knowing where to go with their futures? Well, uh, right from the get-go when I came into the league, first of all, I'll give my mom and dad a lot of uh, credit. Um, I grew up in a family of eight kids, and if we wanted something, we had to go out and earn it. And and then when I made the Leafs in the 70s, didn't get a lot of money and didn't know how long my career was gonna last. So I made it a point to say, okay, hockey's here, it's important to me, but when there's other opportunities, um, it, you know, get involved. So my first year, I'd go to minor hockey banquets, do the Q&A and all those sorts of things. So that, that helped me in being confident as my career moved forward and doing media interviews or uh, you know other things. So. I would say to the, the current guys, I mean, they're making a lot more money and they're probably looking at, I don't have to do that, I don't need the money. But when you get out of the game, um, you've got to do something with your life and if you can do something that, you know, you're happy doing, then uh, the transition's a lot easier, you know? And uh, I did things in the off season so that when I did retire after 15 years, it was a pretty easy adjustment for me to, to do that. But uh, and the other thing is, <clears throat> just don't take this, uh, thing for granted. I, I've always said first impressions are, are, are lasting and important. And when I was a kid, uh, I waited outside the uh, Kitchener Auditorium, I'm maybe seven, eight years old, hoping to get an autograph. A number of players filed by me, didn't stop, disappointed. Then two guys stopped, Bobby Hall and Andy Bathgate. And I always remember that moment and feeling as a kid. Now I make it to the National Hockey League and there's opportunities every day that people come up, they respect, they want to say hello, they want an autograph. I go back to that memory I, I had as a kid uh, in knowing the importance of a first impression. So I try to sure. pass that on to our players today. I mean, um, we now try to protect everybody all the time. You, you know, you park underneath the building, uh, you do different events, you've got people around you. 
but still, um, it's important to be use your common sense and be reasonable about things and not be, you know, stick your head in the freaking mud and, and, and uh, just think it's all about you and it's not about a kid in a, in a jersey or a, an elderly lady or whatever. And to me, that's the most important thing, I think, uh, of anything. For sure. Well said. Uh, okay, cool. Thanks. but it'd be interesting to see from when I scored to, to the 40th the anniversary, anniversary when we're announcing when we're doing this thing. So that could be calculation that I look for something. Yeah, that's going to be a tough one to figure Numbers out. Numbers crunching, yeah. Numbers crunching.